to bring the game to you today was to start from the very beginning. So with that, let's play some Borderlands 3. Hey, you must be the new recruit. I am a CL4PTP steward bot, but you can just call me General Claptrap of the Crimson Raiders. What's your name? Amara. Thanks. I'll pre-order your tombstone just in case. Now, those jerks who tried to murder you are the children of the vault, a bandit cult who follow their creepy leaders with blind devotion. Which reminds me, if you're going to obey my every beck and call, you'll need an echo device. Try it out. I rinsed it off myself. The Echo 3. Slightly more powerful than the Echo 2, and twice as expensive. Besides, the Echo 2 had a tiny issue with spontaneous combustion, so they rebranded those as grenades. Now listen up, recruit. Lilith ordered us to take over our Children of the Vault Propaganda Center. Time to show those culty weirdos that no one messes with the Crimson Raiders. Follow me, recruit, to glory! <laughs> so Lilith's ordered us to take over the recruitment center of the Children of the Vault. In the introduction that we skipped, you would learn that the Children of the Vault is a new cult that's emerged on Pandora. Siren Lilith and the Crimson Raiders are recruiting new vault hunters. That's you, that's us. And we are to investigate the Children of the Vault cult and discover who their mysterious leaders are. Before we wreak our righteous vengeance, you'll need to register your echo at this quick change. Once we defeat the cult, I'll be famous. And when I'm signing autographs, I need you looking sharp while defending me from my legions of fans slash stalkers. All right, now as you can see here, we're playing as Amara, and she's a powerful siren warrior. And like Claptrap mentioned, we're in the quick change where it's up to you how you want your character to look. So you can change Amara and change her emotes, obviously. <laughs> okay. All right, let's keep playing for now, guys. Uh, a user agreement? Boring. Don't worry, corporations have our best interests at heart. Except Dawn. And Hyperion. And Nimway. The Propaganda Center is this way. A locked gate? No! This can't be happening! The entire mission is ruined! Think, Claptrap, think! You're brave and powerful, and people always do what you tell them to! That's it! Recruit, get that gate open! That's an order from your superior officer! So obviously, you're getting a glimpse here on how we use the beginning of the game to make sure players are up to speed on how first-person video games work. We can validate that players understand how to navigate the environment and interact with it. You did it! Best recruit ever! Padoki Kaki. We'll even be able to know that a player's learned how to crouch and how to slide. got to make sure you can jump, and if you miss, that you can mantle up and climb the higher ledges. The propaganda center is up ahead. Those cultists have been killing pimps and raiders left and right. They totally suck skag balls, but I've got a foolproof plan to kick their culty asses. So as with most games, we're using the beginning to make sure that we teach the fundamentals. We're also setting the tone of the game, right? Just like our unique art style, we want people to feel right away what we believe helps to make Borderlands special, a style of writing that's both irreverent and genuine. I hit a weapons cache nearby. Stay quiet and follow my every move. It's stealth time. <laughs> Lilith has to promote me to Super General. Stand back! 
So we're throwing stealth out the window? Relax! On Pandora, it's actually super weird if something's not exploding. Now take your gun, recruit! You're gonna need it. These guns, like myself, aren't beholden to their primary function. I can dance and sing! And some guns now include an alternate shooting mode. Try it out! Follow me, recruit! All right, so as Claptrap just mentioned, in order to stay competitive, some of our gun manufacturers have added alternate firing modes. And if we look here, we can see that we have a Vladoff pistol. And if we just fire regularly, we just fire bullets. But if we switch our alternate firing modes, we fire off micro-missiles. Now later in the game, you'll find guns that can switch between ice bullets and fire bullets, or you might find guns that have a chain gun on top, but when you switch firing modes, it'll shoot out grenades. It gets pretty crazy, and then players who maximize alt firing modes will have like twice the guns available than they had to start with. Wait here. I'll talk my way in, become their king, and then you'll surprise slaughter them in cold blood. Watch and learn, recruit. Hello? Anyone there? This is Shen, holy influencer of the children of the vault. What do you want, Crambot? Hello, bloodthirsty maniac. It is I, Claptrap, slayer of the destroyer and super general of the Crimson Raiders. We have you completely surrounded. Open the gates now, and perhaps I will be merciful. Ah, uh, yeah. Let me think about that. They might call themselves children of the vault, but they're still bandits, and bandits are incredibly stupid. Okay, we're going to surrender. Please don't kill us, Crapi. That's what I thought. Open the doors immediately for your new king. Easy, easy. I'm a, uh, I'm coming out. Just wait right there. We did it. I did it. Another victory for the Crimson Raiders. Hey, I feel funny. What's happening to me? See if we can find some loot. I saw over near that door. I saw a red chest. It looks like a trunk of a car. What do we got here? What else is there? Oh, that's interesting. All right. So we can see that this weapon has high accuracy, higher handling. Let's look at the other one. All right. And this weapon has higher damage and a higher reload time. So it's either finesse or brute force in this case. So what do you guys think? Should we uh, shoot from the hip or should we go with that badass scope? <laughs> I, think, I think you guys said scope, but I heard so You know what? Take both of them. We'll try the scope and then we'll switch. <laughs> oh, that's pretty badass. These are like level one guns too. <laughs>
So if we look around, we should be able to find some somewhere. <laughs> Not in the stack pile. Daquan, you on this? <laughs> All right. <laughs> that looks promising. Oh, there we go. 77. 105, that's better. Take that one. You got a shield! Now you're invincible! Not really, but it just might keep Shiv from killing you in one hit! Now let's get you in there, recruit! Hey, Shiv! All your dumb friends are dead! I challenge you to a trial by combat! But because I'm stuck to this magnet, my loyal champion shall vanquish you in my stead! Come on in, heretic! I haven't met my sacrifice quota for the day! So I know you guys are getting ahead of me. You can know what's coming next. This is uh, this is our first mini boss fight. Daquan, you ready? We're flying without a net here, no god mode. So let's do it. dynamic so it's like different every time they play it that was like the best kill ever I'm glad you guys got to see that oh look at that recruit are you dead if not get me down the controls are on the second floor now you'll notice that Daquan picked up the shotgun that Shiv dropped we think it's really important that your moment of victory should be have a subsequent reward to it right at that moment. So of course, you can pick up gear right away. All right, dude. Daquan has the same affliction I have where you have to open every single freaking chest. Uh, this is a demo we can just, yeah, all right. <laughs> it's so tempting, those the green lights. The controls are on the second floor. <laughs> oh, he claptrap's nagging at us already. So. It's not a Borderlands game, of course, unless Claptrap jumps between being needy and bossy and just pathetic. I don't know how you guys feel about him, but I still kind of love Claptrap, so let's help him out. You oh. <sighs> In Borderlands 3, you can revive NPCs, and NPCs can revive you. Let's help out Claptrap. Focus. Crimson Raider stronghold, so this will have to do for now. 
So what's your name, killer? I am Amara. Nice tattoo, Siren Sister. You must be the voice in my head. Yeah, about that. Not the weirdest thing you're gonna see on Pandora. But seriously, thanks for answering my call. We might not have the numbers, but with a badass like you, we've got a fighting chance. Welcome to the Crimson Raiders. Hey, do you hear bloodthirsty screaming? More CLV. Let's see what you got, recruit. There's too many of them! We're doomed! Doomed! It's the Firehawk! The God Queen wants her hand! Down you go! Okay, so like Randy just mentioned, we've skipped ahead in the story, but if you'll notice, we've also skipped ahead in levels. So I want to take the time to show you the skill trees in Borderlands 3. All right. So when you first get your skills in Borderlands 3, you don't just have one action skill available to you, you have all three action skills available to you at the, the moment you open it up. So then what you do is you equip one of your action skills. Do we want to take a look at the action skills? So this first one is Phase Grasp. Now Phase Grasp will be reminiscent of Maya in that she'll be able to control the battlefield by lifting enemies up into the air. The next one here is Phase Cast. With Phase Cast, she'll shoot out a spectral form of herself to kill enemies on the battlefield. And finally, we have Phase Slam. Now, Phase Slam is an area of effect that comes out around Amara and destroys enemies and knocks them back. So, uh, now as you progress, once you've picked your action skill and equipped it, you'll also open up augmentations that allow you to further customize that action skill. So, there's a way to maximize the build of your character. We've worked hard to make sure that each of our four characters is completely unique, but even within each character, there are hundreds of meaningful options. If two people want to team up and play the same character, they will very likely have completely different capabilities. You ready to go? Let's do it. Hyperion shotgun. Hyperion shotguns have shields that come out. Want to switch back to that shotgun? I will have a place in the great fucking iron trashes! Elemental type, radiation. 
Guy hit critical mass. You're gonna die! If a radiated enemy dies, he'll explode and radiate the enemies around him. I think you clean this area up. Let's see what kind of loot we can find. It's an outhouse, but it's got a green light. <laughs> it's some good stuff. Okay, let's see here. So Amara's level five, these weapons are level five. Uh, I want you to notice that, by the way. Notice the two here. We've got a, a, a rare and an epic, both level five. Uh, and the reason why I want you to remember that is because that was kind of a challenging fight. We're going to need some help for the next section, so we're going to bring in a co-op buddy. Borderlands 3, of course, is fully co-op playable, split screen, networked, however you like to play. Amara just picked up the purple. Turn around and let's look and find our co-op buddy. This is Zane Flint, the operative. Say hi, Zane. All right, we're going to switch to Zane's view. Can we flip that now? Okay, this is Zane's view. I want you to notice something here. Zane is level 25. So obviously Zane's been playing longer than Amara, who is level 5. And if we look at Zane's loot, he's got his own instance of loot. What's going on here? This is called loot instancing. It's a new optional feature in Borderlands 3, and it allows each cooperative player to have their own instance of loot. Instance loot is helpful for players that want to play cooperatively but don't want to compete for the loot that drops. There's nothing worse than when you're getting online with randoms and there's a loot ninja in the group, right? So instance loot solves that problem for players that want to use it. The other feature that complements this is uh, level balancing. Notice how Zane's loot is not only instanced, but it's actually balanced for his level. That means the loot, the enemies, everything automatically balances to the level of the player so that everyone has a good time. In my co-op group, some of us would get ahead of the others, right? And then when we come back together, we'd be out of whack. Well, with instant loot and this mode of gameplay, everything balances out. Now, <laughs> that's okay, you can clap if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's still some of us who actually like competing for loot or bringing in overpowered characters to help, you know, level up those lower level characters. And for those of you who are like that, we can assure you that there is still a mode for you in Borderlands 3, it's called Classic Mode. That's right. Now that we've seen Zane the Operative, let's have a look at what he can do. Since Zane is level 25, we've already equipped a lot of action skills and our skill points here. You wanna walk us through this, Paul? Yeah, let's do this. All right, so the first skill we have is Digiclone. Now Digiclone is really cool because it not only acts as a decoy, it will actually shoot guns as well. But probably my favorite feature is the fact that you can teleport to your Digiclone at any time and swap places. This next ability is called the Sentinel. Now the Sentinel is an autonomous drone that'll fly out to enemies and weaken those enemies or even use your grenades if you have grenade mods equipped. And then we have the barrier skill. Now Zane will throw out a barrier in front of it and it'll block incoming bullets and things like that. But of course, one of the coolest features is that if your team or Zane are around this barrier, sometimes it'll confer benefits like healing, or even if you fire through it, it'll add elemental types to that. Now, probably my favorite feature of Zane is the fact that Zane can use two action skills at one time. That's right. And if you think about it, if you think about Zane, right, like he's got his uh, barrier, which is kind of like the soldier class's capability with that turret. He's got the uh, sentinel, which is, you know, almost like Mordecai's Bloodwing, but a little hyped up from that. Yeah, yeah. He's got uh, the Digiclone, which is kind of like our assassin skill from Borderlands 2. He's kind of like a soldier, a hunter, and an assassin all wrapped up in one. Yeah. All right, uh, we've got Amara, we've got Zane. Uh, we know what they can do. Let's, uh, let's get into the Holy Broadcast Center and see if we can find Mouthpiece. Oopsie, looks like we've got a technical issue, but don't worry, we'll post the welcome vid later along with some new Let's Plays. Signing off for now, don't forget to like, follow, and obey. Another perfect live stream from our infallible God Queen Tyree! The Holy Broadcast Center opens once again to hear your 
sins and receive your skins. Let's see if we can find some loot. Okay, now, once again, being honest, you know, to show the breadth of guns that we have in the game, or just some of the breadth, we cheated a little bit and added some chests with some better weapons here. That red chest isn't going to be in the game you play. We right. just added that for this purpose, because <laughs> it's okay. There's plenty of red chests. You guys will be fine. We'll, yeah. we, we'll feed you baby, baby birds. It's cool. <laughs> We wanted to show you some, uh, some TDR guns, right? Because you remember TDR, they're disposable. Instead of reloading them, you throw them away. And when you throw away a TDR gun in Borderlands 3, some crazy shit can happen. Uh, we've got, you know, guns with legs. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see some other options. What does this one do? <laughs> All right, we've just picked up a few TDR weapons. Let's take them into the next fight. Go just ignore that green on the ground. Now. We're just not gonna learn, are we? We're just gonna keep eating those speakers. <laughs> Go get him, guys! Oh my kids! some ammunition vending machines. Hey, walk up to that ammo vending machine. I want to show you guys this. Now, he's already full on ammo, but you just press that, or press Y right there and you can reload all your ammo. You don't even have to go in and buy things one at a time. <laughs> of course, you can buy individual pieces if you want. Uh, now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever you play a video game and you happen upon a room where there's ammo and vending machines to kind of make sure you're stocked up, it can be a pretty safe bet that you're about to run into a boss fight. Not only is Borderlands 3 a much, much larger game than any Borderlands game before it, but we've added more boss fights than ever before because we think boss fights are exciting opportunities for players to have their skill tested, but also to be rewarded with kick-ass loot. So let's go ahead and see if we can find Mouthpiece. All right. Ah! Mouthpiece just made. Get the rules for you! 
you got some loot over there. Let's get some loot. Yeah. Hey, did you guys see the gun that Mouthpiece was shooting at us with the like kind of sound waves flying out? Check this out. One of the greatest feelings in Borderlands is when an enemy's using a gun against you, you kill that guy, and then you take that gun and use it against your next foes. I love that so much. Yeah. Well, let's do what we came here for, and let's get the vault map. Amara, you going to pick that up? Did you come all this way for that busted-ass map, or are you just here to see me? Didn't know you were such a super fan. Well, you missed the show. Oh, right. But you're all like, what's up with those husks? Well, it's a thing I do. Check out the screens. So I offered the Sun Smashers a place in our family, but they just wanted guns and cash. They betrayed the family. Oh, then Troy said something great. Gods don't negotiate. Gods don't negotiate. I love it. Love it. Like I said, that map is super busted, so go ahead and take it. I'll swing by later to pick it up. You're my most loyal follower, Vault Thief. You just don't know it yet. I'd like to introduce Sanctuary 3. We don't talk about Sanctuary 2. Since Sanctuary 3 is our home base, it's a great stopping point between missions. On Sanctuary 3, we can meet our friends, trade our loot, and prepare ourselves for what comes next. You'll notice here there's a quick change station where we can modify our appearance, but there's a new vending machine here on the right. This is sort of a space lost and found. Have you guys ever lost loot in Borderlands, like a, a purple or a legendary lands in some place we can't reach? We collect all that loss for you, lost loot, and we'll deliver it here for you. You'll never lose loot again. All right, so let's talk about this. This is your player quarters. Now, because we're playing Amara right now, all of the decoration, everything is built around Amara, but you can see that you can place items that you find in the world like this gun. All right, we got a Torg pistol here. It's pretty rad. But again, you can modify your player quarters to how you want to play. Since we picked up a pistol, uh, we'll take it with us on a tour around Sanctuary. And why don't we stop first? Let's head over to Marcus. Just keep going. Ignore that golden chest. <laughs> Marcus's uh, place is right around the corner here. Ah, it's a beautiful day, full of opportunity. Now, in Borderlands 3, Marcus will be our vendor for upgrades to our storage deck unit, right? So we can get more storage to carry more loot and more ammunition. You'll notice that it costs cash to Better upgrade your storage move fast. deck. Marcus also has a shooting range back there, so if you want to get your skills up, practice with any interesting new guns you found, you can What's do that. What's going on, Hunter? We're just going to take a look around this place. Isn't that cool? This map has changed more hands than any other content in Borderlands 3. We've had so many of our uh, talented world builders want to get, a, get their hands on this and make it great. It's not a pub until you have a Moxie's bar, right? Look at you, brightening up my day. The name's Moxie. What's yours, sugar? Thanks for the help, sugar. Come back. Mm. Here, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that's not good. No. <laughs> Bad luck. <laughs> well, thanks for encouraging that. Let's keep going on the tour. Right. I love Sanctuary. I mean, it's just such a beautiful, I don't know, the, the level, that, I didn't work on this one that much. I just kind of helped guide some of it, but the guys that worked, but did the art for this, just it's absolutely stunning. These are the jokes. You're up late. <laughs> Evening. Knock, knock. Anyone home? Just a moment. <gasps> Almost there. <sighs> oh. <sighs> Surprise.
surprisingly comfortable, you know? Like a fleshy sleeping bag, although I do feel a bit viscous. So tennis is back. Let's, uh, let's go head up to the bridge. All right. Hey, uh, hey, Paul. Yes, Randy. What can we do on the bridge? So for the first time ever, we can leave the Pandoran system. You can see Pandora in there in the distance. What's up, killer? All right. Let's get to it. We're in orbit around Pandora right now. We'll check it out briefly before we take off. You can see its distinctive Iridian scar. But with a spaceship like Sanctuary 3, we can visit other worlds. Now, this is early in the game, so we haven't unlocked a lot of the other places that you will get to explore. But for now, we're going to do interstellar fast travel to Promethea. go down to Promethea in a moment, check it out. We'll have to make our way to the docking bay in order to do that. In Borderlands, you'll be able to go back and forth between Promethea and Pandora and all of the other worlds that you discover throughout the game. Might even find a few uh, familiar faces here. What's up, badass? I love Maya's look. She's fully Jedi'd out. We'll take a couple other stops on the way down to the hangar before we head to Promethea. Continue our tour of nice Sanctuary day. 3. Except for everything. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go to Hammerlocks. Now here in Hammerlocks, one of the cool things is Hammerlock asks you to kill different creatures, and this is a trophy room for killing those creatures. Oh, it's you! Apologies, it's dark, and I've never actually cleaned this monocle. You can see right now, all of the, the trophy mounts on the wall are empty, which means that we've got work to do, right? A lot of work to do. Now here in the ship, you can see we have shortcuts built in. The more time you spend on Promethea, the more familiar you'll get with it. We've kind of engineered some shortcuts and other ways to get around, so you can find what you need pretty quickly. How's your day going? Hey there, sugar boots. Ellie's sort of our uh, ship mechanic. In and a while, she, she runs the cargo bay. Down here, we can check out vehicles we've collected. We can also get access to the planets when we're in orbit. We've also got some stowaways we can meet. What you want? Come back, never. I think his uh, vending machine there said veteran on it. Don't look at me like that. I'm doing all the wheel work here. I don't. <laughs> uh, and he locked us out. That's... I think he's building a girlfriend. <laughs> I can't believe that Claptrap's lonely. It's just hard to believe. So we're going to head to the uh, drop pod here. This will help us get down to Promethea. In fact, why don't we just skip ahead a little bit? Uh, rather than start at the beginning of Promethea, we can jump forward a bunch of levels, and uh, I want to show you some pretty exciting action here. In the lore, Promethea is the headquarters of the Atlas Corporation, and you'll notice as we proceed that Atlas is actually under siege by Maliawan and their private army. You see, in Borderlands, in this universe, when a corporation attempts a hostile takeover, they do it with full military-grade force. Now, before we start, I want you to take a look at the gun we're using here. This is an Atlas pistol. Now, the cool thing about an Atlas pistol is it has an alt-fire mode that fires out a tracking dart. And when you fire the tracking dart, it marks a target. And then every bullet that you fire subsequently will hit that target. It's like the fifth element gun. Finally. <laughs> 
So uh, let me introduce our demoists. Uh, we've got Chris. Uh, Chris is playing as Zane, uh, and uh, Zane's going to be our co-op buddy this time. Uh, and Paul is playing as Amara, which is what's on screen for us to watch. You'll notice Amara and Zane are both at level 10. And uh, we've actually set them up with microphones so that we can listen in on their chatter as they play. Paul, Chris, you guys ready? I'm good. Hey. All right. So uh, let's, uh, let's watch. This is the world's first Borderlands 3 co-op live stream. Take it away, Paul and Chris. After you. All right. I'm going in. Bunch of enemies over here. I'm gonna head on the right side and try and split them up. All right, I see a couple behind cover. I'm gonna just pop a tracker. Enemy ahead. Melting on shield, switching to fire. Good ground slam. Yeah, he's down. One on the left still. War packers in. Got a few more. I'm just gonna rain grenades on the crowd. Alright, there's one up there top here. Him. Missed my door. Hit him with a grenade. Got he's him. Down. Nice. surrounding it. If you somehow crack it open, you're going to find some quality firepower in there. So you've just heard from Lorelai. She's an all-new NPC. We skipped past her introduction since we skipped ahead, and we skipped also a lot of her storyline, but trust that you'll be able to meet and spend a lot of time with Lorelai and other NPCs as you explore Promethea and the other worlds of Borderlands 3. You guys ready to finish the fight? Let's go. Do it. I'm going to run right. All right, I'm gonna throw down a shield. Cool. I'm gonna swing into the shield. I'm taking out shield for you? Yeah. Picking it up. I'm switching to corrosion for this. Tracking a bunch of them. Oh, my night. And burn. All right, we got a big crowd on the left here. I'm gonna switch to the shotgun. Flash Trooper, go for the pack. I got this guy. We got two more over here. Nice. Last one. He's done. Nice. I see a chest back here. Let's see what you get. All right, one I can't use, one I can. Got a Torg. Got a bunch of let-off pistols. That level 12 is a little OP, but you guys can save it. Uh, oh, delayed fire mode. That's cool. Ready to move on? All right. 